Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Father, we thank you for the word tonight and as I've already prayed, I'm expecting you God to heal people tonight while the word is being preached. I thank you that people can receive physical healing, emotional healing, spiritual healing, mental healing, any kind of healing that they need. You send your word, Lord, and you heal them, and you deliver them from the pit and from destruction. Okay, a few opening comments. How much thought have you ever given to your thoughts? <laughs> Do you ever think about what you're thinking about? If you find yourself in a bad mood, a low mood emotionally, you feel like you're really getting down in the dumps, getting discouraged, why don't you take a few minutes and stop and think about what you're thinking about? And you'll find that the way you feel is connected to the way you're thinking. Are you aware of how much your thoughts affect every area of your life? They affect the words you speak, your moods, attitudes, your relationship with God, yourself, and other people, and every decision and every behavior that you make. And no, you don't have to just think whatever falls in your head. You can do your own thinking. You can do your own thinking. <laughs> I'll go slow. You can do your own thinking. You see, the reason why it's quiet is because this is something we never think about. We never think about how we think. You know, we just wake up in the morning, the devil says, you're depressed, and you say, I'm depressed. You just get right in agreement with him. Yep, I'm depressed. He says, it's going to be a lousy day. You get up, and the first thing you say to somebody is, it's going to be a lousy day. We have to learn to recognize the lies of Satan and to understand that more than any other thing, he uses our mind. He lies to us. He brings deception into our lives. He tries to steal everything from us that Jesus came to give us. And we can't just sit passively by and wish we didn't feel this way and kind of Hope something happens. You know, that kind of hope really isn't hope at all. Hope is expecting that something good is going to happen. It's not, well, I hope God does something. You know, the Bible says that the kingdom of God has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. And I love that. The kingdom of God has suffered attack, and the energetic take it by force is a better translation. And so we need to stop just thinking that everything good is just going to fall on us. And we need to realize that God is giving us a, a life plan in the Bible. He said, I am the way. And so you might say, in here is the way to live. Now, you can't circumvent it. Doesn't matter if you like it or not. God's not going to change his mind. In here is the way to live. And any problem that you have, the answer to that problem is in this book. And so we learn what's in here, and this takes time. You get better and better and better, but nobody's going to have total victory overnight. This is not a drive-through breakthrough. You can't just, you know, you can drive through and get just about everything a day, but you cannot get a drive-through breakthrough. You're going to have to go through to get the breakthroughs that you need. Amen? And changing our thinking, learning how to let the Holy Spirit show us when our thoughts are wrong, learning how to recognize the lies of Satan and how to learn and learning to think the way that God thinks about every situation is the very basic foundational thing that has to take place for any kind of real transformation in our lives. Do you ever feel like that you're losing your mind? <laughs> well, perhaps you are. Perhaps you've lost or given up the control of your thoughts. <laughs> so really when we say, I feel like I'm losing my mind, it's because we're letting the enemy do our thinking for us. 
And he's filling our minds with worry and fear and anxiety and threats and every kind of torment. You say, well, I, I just don't know what to do. What, what can I do? Well, think something else. Think something good. Good always overcomes evil. Well, I, I can't help it, you know. I just, I'm just a worrier. Well, the first thing you might do is stop saying that. Don't ever say again, I'm a worrier. Don't say that. Perhaps you've never even known that you could control your thoughts. First scripture we're going to look at, we're going to look at lots of scripture this weekend. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. For the weapons of our warfare, everybody say, I'm in a war. <laughs> are not physical weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and the destruction of strongholds. Now, a stronghold is a place where an enemy will barricade himself in and from that vantage point control what's going on. So the devil tries to build strongholds in our minds that are lies and deceptions, but they're things that over a period of time he convinces us to believe, and as long as we believe it, it's our reality. Even if it's not true, it still becomes our reality because we believe it. For years and years, I believed, I, this was my thinking. I will never, because I've been abused, I will never be able to have a really good life. I'll always have to have a, like a, a, a second-rate life because of what happened to me. And that was the way I believed, and so that became my reality. Do you realize that what you believe becomes your reality? You can't go beyond what you believe. If you believe that you don't have any confidence, then you're going to behave as if you have no confidence, even though Christ is your confidence and he is living in you. But if you don't believe that you have confidence because of your relationship with him, then you'll behave as if you don't have any, so you'll be the one that won't get the job, you'll be the one that won't get the favor, you won't get the benefit, you won't get the breakthrough, you won't be liked. And it's all because of the way you feel about yourself. Not because that's the way things really have to be, but it's what you have let the devil convince you that has to be that way. Now, there is not a person hearing my voice right now that cannot benefit from this and see very good and positive changes in your life, and I'm talking about right away. Now, that doesn't mean the whole problem's gonna be solved right away because it takes time to renew your mind. It takes time to learn how to think right. But let me tell you something. Every day that you're going in the right direction is another day you're not still going in the wrong direction. And so even if you haven't arrived yet, it's better to be on your way to somewhere good than to keep going back to something wrong all the time. Inasmuch as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings, now those are all processes of the thought life. So he must be talking about strongholds that are built in the mind. And every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God, so everything that doesn't agree with the truth that we find in the Bible is a lie. Everything that doesn't agree with the truth that we find in the Bible is a lie. Everything... <laughs> that we believe that does not agree with the Word of God, I don't care if it's the 21st century or the 27th century or the 30th century, God does not change. He is the same. And you know a lot of the stuff that's going on in our world today and people think it's the modern way to live. I feel so sorry for people who don't know the Word of God. And it's part of our job to make sure that we're doing everything that we can do to get as much truth out as we possibly can. Because the only thing that's going to defeat those lies is the truth of God's Word. Everything that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God, we lead every thought Somebody say every thought. 
We lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ the Messiah. And you know, to me it's exciting to understand that I can have a measure of control over my life by learning how to think the way God thinks. I'm glad that I have free choice, and I'm glad that God has given me free will. And I can choose to use my free will to line it up with God's will. You don't use your free will to go do whatever you want to do. God has given us freedom because he doesn't want puppets. He doesn't want a bunch of people that he made serve him. He said, this is what I want for you. This is what's going to work out good for you. I want you to love me with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. I provided a good life. This is the way to live. But now you can do whatever you want to. And as we use our free will to choose his will, you are going to have a life that is so amazingly wonderful that you're not even going to hardly know what to do with yourself. I don't care how saved you are. If you have stinking thinking from daylight till dark, you're going to have a stinking life. Amen. I don't care how saved you are. <laughs> you can have your whole Bible underlined in three different colors. But if you have stinking thinking all the time, you're going to have a stinking life. When somebody says, my life stinks, then you might as well just say to them, well, then it's because you've you got stinking thinking. What kind of life do you want? You know what I think? I think bottom line is, is people want to be happy. You know, all the, all the things that people go out and buy, the, you know, just people want to be happy. Credit card debt is now like, I don't know, it's just the highest it's ever been in history. And it's people trying to buy a little bit of happiness. But what you can never buy in a store is free right here because your happiness is not in what you own it's in knowing who you are and who you belong to John 10 10 the thief comes only in order to steal to kill and destroy Jesus said I came and boy I could stop right there and shout I came so now all of a sudden we have this holy interruption into Satan's plan. He comes to steal, to kill and destroy. Jesus said, but I came that they might have and enjoy life. Not just walk around breathing, but being miserable. Have and enjoy your life in abundance to the full until it overflows. God wants you to have so much joy that it's bubbling out of you and splashing all over other people. And joy can be everything from hilarity to a calm delight. And I like the part about just a calm delight. I think that's the way that God wants us to live. Well, Satan doesn't want us to have this kind of good life, so he injects every kind of lie into our minds that he possibly can. Lies about God? Like, I don't know, you might have walked in here tonight believing God was mad at you because of something you did or something you didn't do. Well, I've got good news. God is not mad at you. God actually loves you, and he never for one second in your whole life ever stops loving you no matter what you do. Now, that doesn't mean that you're just going to get by with a lot of goofy, bad behavior. God will chastise you and correct you, but even that he does out of love because God loves you too much to leave you alone in your mess. Isn't that good news? I love the chastisement of God because it lets me know that he's watching over me and he's not satisfied to let me live a subpar life. It's possible to have a negative mindset and a negative attitude that is destroying your life while you spend your life blaming others instead of taking responsibility for making a change. I'm going to read it again. <laughs> it is possible 
for me, for you, for anybody watching my TV, yes, we know you're out there, to have a negative mindset and a negative attitude that is destroying your life while you spend your time blaming everything that's wrong in your life on somebody else and never taking responsibility Well, now somebody's thinking right away, well, it's not my fault. <laughs> no, it's the devil's fault. It's not Charlie's fault or Sam's fault or Joe's fault or Mary's fault or Maud's fault. It's the devil's fault. We war not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and wickedness in high places. Our war is with the enemy. He finds different people to work through, but our real war is with him. And you may not have been the fault at all of the situation that you're in right now, but I will tell you this, only you and God working together can fix it. Amen. Only you and God working together can fix it because the person you're mad at is never gonna come back around and fix your problem. No matter how long you stay mad at them or how long you hate them or how bitter you become, they're just going to be out somewhere having a good time while you're miserable. So you might as well just give that up and just say, okay, God, I am ready now to agree with you. I will take responsibility for where I'm at right now. You show me what needs to be done and give me the strength to do what you want me to do. And I'm never going to look back again. I'm going straight forward from this day on. Now, I'm going to read you a parable by Joyce Meyer. <laughs> it was springtime and everything was beginning to blossom. Spring is usually a time of year that people really enjoy. The deadness and the cold of winter is over and spring reminds us of hope and new growth. Julie was doing spring cleaning, cleaning her closet from winter to spring clothes and thinking about planting some colorful flowers in the yard. Everything felt bright and filled with hope, but then her husband, Charlie, came home from work with some bad news. He had been fired from his job. Julie found it difficult to have any empathy for him because this was the fourth job that Charlie had been fired from in a seven-year period of time. Although Julie was normally very positive and peaceful, the news Charlie brought home was upsetting to her. He told her not to get upset, that he would indeed get another job. But Julie knew there was a deeper problem that Charlie wasn't willing to deal with. If you find yourself in the same situation over and over, you're the only common denominator that's in that situation every time. <laughs> this actually is true. A lady came to A, a pastor friend of mine, and she said, next week I'm getting married for the seventh time, and I want you to pray that this man is going to treat me right. <laughs> now, let me tell you, that's the height of deception. <laughs> I mean, if you're on number seven, there's a good possibility it's not the other person's fault. <laughs> Thank you. Charlie wasn't willing to face his problems or deal with them. If he'd been fired from one or perhaps even two jobs, she might have agreed that it was simply an irritable boss or other employee problems. But after four jobs, she knew that somehow Charlie was to blame. Not only had he been fired from four jobs, he was also unable to keep friends. You see, Charlie was very difficult to get along with. He was negative, complained frequently, and had an ability to darken any atmosphere within a few minutes. <laughs> Charlie had been angry with his boss, whom he said didn't recognize his talents. <laughs> and Charlie felt certain that he had been treated unfairly. He was angry with his coworkers because he said, they didn't like him, and they had complained to the boss about him. 
Anger wasn't news to Charlie. In fact, he'd been angry about one thing or another for most of his life. <laughs> he felt that he was not as naturally talented, not as privileged as most people, and he resented it. He often complained that, that life had dealt him a bad hand. Life threw me under the bus was a favorite self-pitying statement of his. <laughs> he blamed his parents, teachers, and peers for his lot in life. He blamed everyone, but no fault was found in Charlie. Although it was true that Charlie had some disadvantages growing up, he also had some opportunities as well to have and enjoy a good life. You never have disadvantages without having some opportunities somewhere in your life. That's all right. You know, I don't mind if we go slow. I can even come back and do it again tomorrow if we don't get it tonight. I like to say that how we get started in life is not nearly as important as how we finish. We may not be in control of our beginning, but we can be in control of our finish. It was not my fault that my father sexually abused me, but it would have been my fault if I would have let it ruin the whole rest of my life. Now, you know, this makes some of you happy and others, there's a possibility I might be making you mad right now. Well, please don't leave because if you do, you're just going to stay in the same mess, keep going around and around the same mountain. And then maybe somebody else will tell you the same thing 10 years from now. And maybe you'll believe them and maybe you won't. But no matter how unfair life has treated you, you working with God as a partner with him is the only thing that's ever going to fix it. The truth was that Charlie had been fired from his job because he was a very negative thinking person. He had an entitlement attitude that made him feel he deserved better treatment without doing his part to deserve it. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> He was repeating the same pattern that he had followed his entire life. And he would repeat it again and again and again, unless he was willing to stop blaming everybody else for what was wrong in his life and take responsibility to start making the changes that needed to be made. Somebody say, amen. amen. Now, we'll get back to Charlie in just a little bit. Enjoying life begins with a choice. The first choice is to believe that all things that have happened to us can work out for good. No matter what they are, all things that have happened to us, all bad things, unpleasant things, unjust things, unfair things can work out for good to those who number one, love God, and number two, are called according to his purpose. And let me just simplify that who love God and who are willing to do what he shows them to do. I'll never forget a girl that attended a conference that I did many years ago, and it was a conference where the, it, it was, happened to be a ladies' conference, and the ladies were all sitting at these round tables in this big banquet center. And... Um, three, four sessions we had, and at the end, the lady came up to me, and she said, well, I found out what my problem was this weekend. And I said, what's that? She said, well, she said, I've been abused, and I've had a lot of bad things happen in my life, but she said, as I sat at the table, it seemed that God had placed me with several other ladies who had had almost identical backgrounds as I've had. Isn't it amazing how God will set you up sometimes? And she said, by the end of the weekend, this is what I found out. They're all free. Everything that God told them to do that they did, he also told me to do, but I never did it. Well, I think it's safe to say that the Word of God teaches us what God thinks about every area of our lives. And he wants us to learn to think the way 
that he thinks so we can have the best life that he wants us to have. You know, it's really one of the foundational things that we need to learn if we want to have any kind of real transformation in our lives. This community likes boys, so they want their boys to go to school first. The girls, they don't have any, any value when it comes to education for them. So if they can get some money for her and not have the burden of having to care for her, it helps the family. The flags that you see on the homes over my shoulder represent a long-standing tradition that is very difficult on girls. As soon as a very young girl reaches puberty and she's of childbearing years, you'll see these flags above their houses representing the fact that a young girl is available to a man, essentially on the market, up for sale. And at that point, her life changes dramatically. So what they do is they take him out of school and they'll actually go through different activities, teaching them how to cook, how to be a, a wife in the, in the home. But part of it is also how to please a man. And that's through, you know, normal things in the house, but also sexually. So they teach them different things about sexuality and so on. So we are doing anything that we can to help people understand the value of girls. That's the key. And helping these girls by taking them into a program <laughs> called Imagine Hope. If they would live with us for six months and we would have devotions, lead them to the Lord, really mentor them in how to be a godly woman, and then at the same time teach them how to do some skills, basic things like jewelry making or whatever it is, that they can have some kind of an income that they can bring to their families. This is a good hat. Were you afraid when you thought that you were going to have to be married? Some of my friends, they are already married now, but they are used to suffer in that marriage. So if myself, I was afraid to be married while I'm still young, but because of this program, my mom, she didn't take me through the marriage, but she bring me here so that I can proceed with my education, so that I can help her in future change our situation. I, I'm so grateful. I wish I could bring everyone here and let them see the impact of what's happening. Um, and I'm grateful for it because we should give. And we should give to those that we don't benefit us. And I think that's what Hand of Hope does and, and we're grateful for that. We are helping young women like this all over the world. Help us to guide, restore, and love young girls. Your designated gift today, if you choose, can go to Project Girl, or you can give toward water, you can give toward feeding, and do something that you know will make a difference. It's very painful and difficult to go through life with a wounded soul. I know because for years I lived that way due to being sexually abused by my father when I was a young child. But I learned that God could heal even my deepest hurts if I would just open my heart up and let him in. And in my new book called Healing the Soul of a Woman, you too can discover how to allow God into those wounded places in your life. God has a brand new beginning for you, and you do not have to spend the rest of your life hurting. Bestel nu innerlijke genezing van de vrouw via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. Een dag begint pas goed met een goed ontbijt. En een dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce. Nieuwe impulsen en bemoedigende gedachten die je zullen sterken tijdens je dag. Abonneer je gratis op de overdenkingen 
op joy-meijer.nl slash overdenking of op Facebook. Begin je dag goed. Het is het waard.